I welcome you all. In this video, we will discuss about the construction of epicycloid. The highlights are clear explanation, step by step drawing practice, determination of arc length, complete animation. The question is a circle of diameter 50 mm rolls on the outside of another circle of diameter 200 mm without slipping. Draw the path traced by a point on the smaller circle. Draw a tangent and a normal to any point on the curve. So, this diagram is the solution for the given question. At the end of this video, you will understand how to draw it. First, let us understand the definition of epicycloid. Secondly, we will draw the construction of epicycloid. Finally, we will know the practical applications of epicycloid. So, let us now understand the definition of epicycloid. An epicycloid is a curve generated by a point on the circumference of a circle which rolls on the outside of another circle without slipping. The rolling circle is called the generating circle. The fixed circle along which it rolls is called the director circle or base circle and the point A may be called the generating point. Now, in the question it is given base circle radius capital R equal to 100 mm, generating circle radius R is equal to 25 mm. If I have a point C as center, measure 100 mm as radius, using a compass draw a semicircle. This circle is the director circle or base circle. Locate the point A on the base circle and draw on the outside a smaller circle of radius 25 mm. This circle is called as the generating circle and the point A is the generating point. Now, if this circle, smaller circle, rolls one complete revolution without slipping on the outside of the bigger circle, the director circle, the path traced by the point A is called as epicycloid. Now, let us see how the point A moves as the circle rolls one complete revolution. So, you can see now the point A moves up for half the revolution of the smaller circle. After half the revolution, the point A now moves down and after one complete revolution, the point A again touches the director circle. Now, this path traced by the point A on the circumference of the smaller circle. If the smaller circle makes one complete revolution, that path is called as epicycloid. Now, the definition. An epicycloid is a curve generated by a point on the circumference of a circle which rolls on the outside of another circle without slipping. Determination of arc length AA. The arc length AA can be determined by finding the angle subtended by the arc AA at the center C. Now, we know that the path traced by the point A is called as an epicycloid. Now, this circle moves from the initial point to the final point. This length AA, the arc length, it is equal to 157 millimeter. We cannot measure this length because using a scale, I cannot measure arc length. Therefore, we now try to find the angle. The formula is R theta equal to 2 pi R. Therefore, theta is equal to 2 pi r by capital R. So, theta is equal to 2 into 180 degrees into 25 by 100. Therefore, theta is equal to 90 degrees. Now, this angle is equal to theta equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, if I can measure this angle, theta is equal to 90 degrees. That is, A C A angle, if it is theta, 
equal to 90 degrees it means that the arc length AA is equal to 157 millimeter. So, using the angle I can easily measure that AA length will be equal to 157 millimeter. Now, let us go to the construction of an epicycloid. Step by step drawing practice will be used here. So, the question a circle of diameter 50 mm rolls on the outside of another circle of diameter 200 mm without slipping. Draw the path traced by a point on the smaller circle. Draw a tangent and a normal to any point on the curve. The given data is rolling circle diameter is 50 mm and base circle diameter is 200 mm. Now, take an A3 sheet. Draw the margin on all four sides. Write the question number. In the bottom right corner, write all dimensions R in millimeter. Capital R, the value of the base circle, radius capital R is equal to 100 mm. Generating circle radius small r is equal to 25 millimeter. Now, locate the point C. Through this point C, draw a horizontal line. Take a compass, measure radius 100 mm and draw a semicircle. Locate any point A on this circle, the bigger circle. Use a scale now, join C and A and extend it. Now, from the point A, measure 25 millimeter radius small r is equal to 25 millimeter. Measure 25 millimeter, mark the point O. Center point as O, radius OA equal to 25 millimeter, draw a circle. Mark the end point. Now, we have to find the angle to measure the arc length. Theta is equal to 90 degrees. Take your protractor, keep the protractor on the baseline OA and reference point as C, measure 90 degrees and draw a perpendicular line to CA. Mark the point on the bigger circle, point A. Now, this arc length AA is equal to 157 millimeter. Now, measure 25 millimeter from A, mark the point O. Center point O, OA radius, draw a circle. Here, I have two circles, one on the left side and one on the right side. The left side circle is the initial point, starting point, And the right side circle is the final point. After one complete revolution, the circle will come and stop here. Now, you have point A on the base circle. Two points are there on the base circle. I want some more points such that I can draw the epicycloid using a smooth curve. So, I wish to go for 12 points. If I want to go for 12 points, divide the circle into 12 equal parts and divide the angle also into 12 equal parts. Therefore, take a protractor, keep it on the point O, measure 90 degrees, locate the point on the circumference and draw a line joining O and extend it this line cuts the circumference on the other end. So, this line is perpendicular to OA line. Again, take your protractor, keep it on the point O. Now, if I divide the circle into 12 equal parts, 360 by 12 is 30 degrees. Therefore, measure 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180 degrees here, such that you can divide the circle into 12 equal parts. Now, measure 30 degrees, mark a point. Measure 60 degrees mark a point, 90 is there. Measure 120 degrees mark a point. Measure 150 degrees mark a point and 180 is there. Now, use a scale. Join the 30 degree angle point passing through O. This line cuts the circumference on the other end. Mark the point. Similarly, from the 60 degree angle point, join a line passing through O. This line cuts the circumference on other end. Mark that point. Similarly, from the 120 degree angle point, draw a line passing through O. This line cuts circumference on the other end, mark that point. Lastly, from the 150 degree angle point, draw a line passing through O. This line cuts circumference on the other end, mark that point. Now, give lettering in the anticlockwise direction starting from A. Point 1, point 2, 
now take a compass center point c and c o radius draw an arc from o to o this arc is called as arc of centers okay now after drawing the arc of centers again take your protractor and divide the 90 degree angle into 12 equal parts 90 by 12 is 7.5 degrees okay so take your protractor keep it on the point c reference line is ca now measure 7.5 degrees draw a line this line cuts the arc of centers at point o1 similarly take 15 degrees now this line cuts the arc of centers at the point o2 similarly measure 22.5 degrees this line cuts arc of centers at o3 similarly take 30 degrees this line cuts arc of centers at O4. Similarly, take 37.5 degrees. This line cuts the arc of centers at O5. Take 45 degrees. This line cuts the arc of center at O6. Take 52.5 degrees. This line cuts the arc of center at O7. Take 60 degrees. This line cuts the arc of center at O8. Take 67.5 degrees. This line cuts the arc of center at O9. Take 75 degrees, this line cuts the arc of center at O10. Take 82.5 degrees, this line cuts the arc of centers at O11. Thereby, I have now divided the circle into 12 equal parts and also I have divided the angle into 12 equal parts. Next, take your compass, center point C, radius C to 6th point, draw a concentric arc. I again repeat center point is C using compass center point C C to 6 as radius draw an arc this arc is concentric arc again same center point C radius is C to 7 draw an arc this arc will also pass through 5 and the most important thing is I have drawn the arc till the next circle another circle correct again center point is C radius C to 8 draw a concentric arc this arc will pass through 4 and again I have seen that the arc will go and end in the another circle ok next C a center point C 9 radius draw an arc this arc should pass through 3 you can see here 9 3 arc the arc passing through 9 and 3 is different and the center arc of centers is different ok be very clear here next again center point is C C 10 radius draw an arc this arc passes through the point 2 also. Next center point is C, radius C 11, draw an arc, this arc must pass through 1. So, see that you draw in perfection such that all the concentric arcs should pass through other point also. 7th arc must pass through 5, 8th arc must pass through 4, 9th arc must pass through 3, 10th arc must pass through 2, 11th arc must pass through 1. So, this is very important because only then it is clear that your drawing is perfect. Okay. Now, I again wish to again summarize here. I have drawn the bigger circle. I have drawn the smaller circle. I have divided the smaller circle in 12 equal parts. I have divided the angle in 12 equal parts. Then I have drawn the 12 concentric arcs. Lastly, the last stage, I have 12 center points. Correct. So, keeping O1 as center keeping O1 as center, radius equal to radius of the generating circle, 25 millimeter, okay, cut an arc. So, take a compass, center point is O1, radius is 25 millimeter, cut an arc. This arc must cut the line or the arc passing through 1. Mark the point as A1. Next, similarly, center point is O2, radius 25 millimeter, cut the arc passing through 2. So, this cutting point is A2. Similarly, take center point as O3, radius 25 millimeter, cut an arc, cut the arc which is passing through point 3. Okay. So, this point is your A3. Again, center point is O4, radius 25 millimeter, cut the arc passing through 4. So, this point, cutting point is A4. Center point is O5, radius 25 millimeter, cut the arc passing through 5. 
this cutting point is A5. Next, center point is O6, radius 25 millimeter. Cut the arc passing through 6. This point is the A6. Now, till here, I was cutting the arc on the left side. After the circle rolls more than half the revolution, cut the arc on the right side. Okay. Now, center point is O7, radius 25 millimeter. Cut the arc passing through 7. The cutting point is A7. Again, similarly, center point is O8, radius 25 millimeter. Cut the arc passing through 8. This cutting point is A8. Again, center point O9, radius 25 millimeter. Cut the arc passing through 9. This cutting point is A9. Next, center point is O10, radius 25 millimeter. Cut the arc passing through 10. This cutting point is A10. Next, center point is O11, radius 25 millimeter. Cut the arc passing through 11. Mark the point as A11. And the last point is A. Now, you can see that the point A has moved up till half the revolution from the base circle and again moved down for the next half revolution. So, this path traced by the point A is called as epicycloid. Now, let us first join all these points by a smooth curve. If you feel that the answer that is the curve is smooth, then draw it darkly. Now, this is the answer. This curve is called as the epicycloid. Okay. Now, let us now go for the second part. We must draw a tangent and normal to any point P on the curve. So, I have now located a point P here between A8 and A9. To this point P, I will now draw the tangent and normal. Again, take a compass, center point as P, radius 25 millimeter, cut an arc on the arc of centers. Okay. Mark that point as E. Now, take a scale, join E and C. This line cuts the base circle at a point. That point is your N. Join N and P. This is the normal. Okay. Now, to this normal, I must draw a tangent. Therefore, take your protractor, keep it on the point P and draw a perpendicular line. Mark the line as M. So, here MP is tangent line. NP is normal line. Okay. Dimension of the circle here, it is diameter 50. And uh, don't forget to write the name of the curve. It is epicycloid. Okay. This is the complete answer. Next, practical applications of epicycloid. Epicycloid is used in the design of profiles of gear tooth system. Okay. So, I hope that you are clear now with epicycloid. Wish you all the best.